Hi and hello everyone. What we have been seeing was the idea of what is called as open Jackson network which let us recall the description that it is a network of k nodes. Arrive, external arrivals happens according to a Poisson process and the service is happening in at each node according to an exponential distribution and there is a routing probability of moving uh, customers moving from one node to the other node which is denoted by Rij and there is no limit or on Q capacity at any node. And uh, this is the general idea that you know you would have seen um, repeatedly we are talking about the set of network uh, uh, the setup of the network is what something looks like this. Okay. Then we derived I mean or we stated the global balance equation and then we gave the solution to that as this in the case of a single server model. right? So, we saw that the network acts as if it is independent environment Q though really it is not really the case. So, we just verified the solution and we have obtained the performance measures for this single server at each node open Jackson network which is basically will be given by because of the form of distribution not just because not because of they are MM1 in real sense, but because of the form of distribution that you are getting. So, the Li can be given by rho i by 1 minus, 1 minus rho i and w i is by little's law. Then the expected total number of customers in the network is this and the expected total weight in the uh, network for any customer before it finally departs is basically w which is given by this expected total number in the system divided by the total arrival rate to this network or the system which is basically the Littles formula for the entire network. There are other performance measures which one can you know define, but let us not worry about that too much. So, this is what is the performance measure that might work. Uh, you know one other performance measure that is sometimes used is the number of wishes to a particular node because there is a feedback and so on. So, how it is anyway that is one can look at. Okay. Now, what we have seen is open Jackson network the restriction that we had was the single server network. Okay. Now, this particular case can be extended to the multi server case without any difficulty. Okay. This can be generalized to an open Jackson network where there are instead of single server at each node there are C i channels or C i servers at each node. Then again the joint distribution is given by the product of. So, this is nothing but the p at n 1, p at n 2 and so on product p at n k where now this p n's are really the equilibrium uh, distribution of number in the system in an MMCQ right with C i servers here. So, that as you know is given in terms of this with p 0 the corresponding p 0 i and where this a i of n i just to I mean, write it in a simple way like you use the notation a i of n i which is either equal to n factorial n i factorial here or C i factorial times C i to the power C n i minus C i that is what would have been the difference in this particular case as you have seen earlier. And this P o i because it is determined from this condition that is right. So, it is exactly the same one can prove it in, in, in such generality, but thing is that in the network and uh, you know the balance equation would be slightly complex up to C i and so on that is all. But it is possible that you know one can show that this is also the case just like for the single server case which was very easy to show also. Okay. Again here this open network you see that this acts as if it is an independent MMCA just like the previous case and accordingly the performance measures can be obtained in a similar manner as that the original single channel network like it will have a only thing these expressions would vary. right? this expressions would vary, but otherwise this remains the same even if there are C i servers in each node that is what would be the case that you know one can easily generalize to the multi server case. Okay. So, these are the number in the system 
Now, in any queuing system, we have also seen the other quantity which is we have already obtained through, through his the, the sojourn times in a way, right. This gives you the sojourn time in the network, this is the sojourn time in uh, the node i, right. We have already obtained the mean performance measures. Now, what about the waiting time distributions that you can think, okay. And related to that is the output processes, okay. Though it is tempting to conclude because the number in the system result turn out to be the same as amounts C Q, the waiting time distribution also would be the same as that of MMC, but that is not really the case because if you recall when we talked about the waiting time distribution that is in an MMC or MM1 model, we relied on the fact that uh, okay, Pn this is not Qn, this is An, okay. So, we relied on this particular fact that the arrival point probabilities were equal to the arbitrary time probabilities of the number in the system and which further relied on Poisson input. Here, because of feedbacks, right, the arrivals to nodes are not necessarily Poisson in general. Of course, in a series network, they will be Poisson in a, uh, again in series network also like you know, you would see like what would happen to the waiting time when you make more than two, we will just discuss. But our feed forward network, they will be Poisson, but if there is feedback, then the input to each node is not a truly Poisson one, okay. And, uh, it is very difficult then to talk about waiting time distribution because the waiting time distribution then, then will become dependent, right. It is not independent because suppose if there is a feedback, suppose you assume that there are two nodes, you know, first time the customer comes. Now, if you look at the time customer arrives in the system and to the time it will, he will exit the system after getting the service, this will be much like the earlier one right for this tagged customer. But suppose if he comes back to you know this comes back to again with a feedback suppose if he comes back again to that node then what happens right. Then the time how long you know he has to pass through this would obviously depend on his previous time right. Not just on his but even other customers in front of him how much they have spent how long he has been in the first sojourn time what how was how long because when second time when he comes he would see in front of him some customers who have actually arrived from outside before him and some customers who would have arrived because of feedback they are in front of him or some other customers who arrived you know from outside after his arrival he would see both kind of uh, customers right. Then what happens is that when how long he, he spent in the first time when in going through the system. So, that would determine how many would be these numbers, right. So, there is a dependency one can easily, uh, you know, intuitively also you can visualize that how it will happen. So, they are not going to be independent, things are complex and because of that like this waiting time distributions will turn out to be difficult. Not just that, even in a series, right. Suppose in this right or a feed forward network, suppose if there is a, if it is not a single server, but multiple server, even in a series, the two nodes assume series, but multiple servers are there. Then you know like what would happen is that say the customer who arrives first will get into the service, second customer he will get into the second server and so on. Once all servers are busy in the node 1, then the other customers would wait, right. But when, when they go to second node, this sequencing may be broken. Why? Because out of this customer, anyone can complete the service at the earliest, right. So, the customer who arrived later might complete the service, uh, you know, earlier with the server and then he moved ahead of the another customer who actually arrived ahead of him in the first node, right. So, there is a bypassing. This also poses problem when you actually want to see how in order to determine the waiting time in this case. So, these are two issues, right. Feedback, 
bypassing both this you know it has been shown with even very simple examples uh, i mean as uh, early as uh, in 70s itself in 1970s itself like you know with simple examples it has been shown that these are not really very simple even a very simple situation this bypassing in case of multi server systems feedback in the case of a general jackson network this can cause and actually causing complexity problems with trying to determine what is the sojourn time okay so only for very simple systems or feed forward system with single server you can really talk in a easier way the uh, question about what is the waiting time distribution but beyond that things become very complex because you know how this behaves right as you can see it's very difficult to gauge and uh, hence this poses a problem so essentially what we are pretty much saying is that nothing much can be said you know about the waiting time distribution in a concrete way in a, even in this very simple settings now forget about going beyond this but mean value still holds because of little slow okay so the mean value results are true if they satisfy little slow it can be obtained but if you want the distribution of waiting times things are not going to be that easy okay one may be also interested about in the output processes in such situations okay now as we have seen for series or feed forward network the flows between nodes and to the outside world are truly poisson but the feedback destroys poisson flows and jackson solution still holds that is a plus point but the feedback you know there is no poisson then you cannot really if the input itself is not poisson then what is going to be the output it very difficult to characterize so the characterization of this departure process because that might be of also interest in some situations is again complex because of feedback for waiting time the culprit is feedback and bypassing but here in the output process it is the really the feedback that is causing trouble otherwise one can characterize in a way what is the uh, output process or the departure process how it happens despite these two drawbacks with respect to wait time distribution and output processes this uh, jackson network is still quite popular and used because as you have seen the system size results are quite neat and clean though you have a network you can you know look at each node individually suppose the network satisfies certain properties then you can look at each nodes individually and you get the corresponding quantities and pull together these quantities to get the system wide or network wide measures that you are looking for in that sense this is quite useful quite neat clean and very much useful of course with assumption that we have this poisson exponential assumptions you know we cannot do away with this in case of jackson network so with that right so this is uh, whether it is computer system or communication system or you know inventory system supply networks or production systems like these are quite useful in determining you know various quantities of interest in such situations okay so that's the 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 uh, part about the open jackson network that we have seen now let us look at a very simple three node call center again taken from the text that you can easily see what is the description of the system that's what it is the three node you know a call center kind of uh, scenario that calls arrive in a poisson fashion with a mean rate of 35 per hour at a three node telephone system of an insurance company imagine an insurance company or some such uh, processes that happening now when the call arrives there are two options of course the the caller has to press one for claims and two for policy service assume that there are only two so that's what is happening here so the caller's listening time and he makes a decision whether to press one or two and button pressing time all these times if you assume that this is a, follows an exponential distribution with a mean of 30 seconds okay 
Now at this node like only one call at a time can be processed. So, other calls can wait in the queue, any number of calls can wait in the queue that is possible. Okay. Now, the data suggests that you know out of these uh, calls that arrive to this uh, call center, 55 percent of the calls are related to the claims uh, that is made to the insurance company and 45 percent are with regard to policy service like you know you need to uh, additionally you want to add uh, certain uh, things and in the policy details or some inquiry or such some requirement. So, this is all is required here. Okay. So, the claim processing node has three parallel servers. So, it is a three server node this and the service node has seven parallel servers both following exponential service time distribution with a mean of 6 minutes because for claim processing it may take a little bit shorter because you just have to give out the forms and then tell out which form to fill and close it and 20 minutes probably takes longer time to inquire what is that, what is the requirement, why do we need and so on. So, you may whatever it is that. So, just, just assume that there are 6 and 20 is the number. Now, you assume that all buffers in front of nodes can hold as many calls as come into queues which means that from node 1 and node 1 uh, suppose if you you know move to the climbs node or service node that you know you will wait there for the corresponding uh, expert to answer your call. Okay. Now, you also see that about 2 percent of customers who after finishing climbs they also go to a policy service and 1 percent of the customers who finish the policy service they also then comes back to claims right. This is what is the thing that you have. Now, what is your interest? You want to know what is the average queue sizes at uh, in front of each node at, at the claims at uh, policy service right at node 1 which is out from outside when the call comes in all these things what is the average number of queue sizes or what is the number of total size system size in those nodes and what is the total average time a customer spends in the system. So, here queue size means the system not just the number in the queue it is number in the system that is what you know. Needed. What is the total average time a customer spends in the system right. So, that is what your interest. Now, one is for the external arrival node. 2 if you denote the climbs node and 3 as the policy node. So, one can now think about the routing matrix right from external like the, the routing matrix would then be given by this right because in this particular case 55 percent goes to climbs and 45 percent goes to policy and after finishing in climbs uh, 2 percent goes to policy and from after finishing policy service like one person goes to claims that is what it is right. So, this is the routing matrix that you have here. Now, from outside it is 35 per hour in node 2 and 3 no arrivals there is a single server uh, because only one call can be there in, in the beginning in the node 1. So, there is a single server and 120 is the rate at which call comes right. So, that is what uh, you have here right. So, this is what you have processing over because 30 seconds so 120 per hour you can do. C2 which is climbs node it has 3 servers and 6 minutes so it is 10 per hour and here C3 it is 7 so it can handle 3 per hour. Okay. Now, what we have to now get we have to first get the total mean flow rate which is basically you have to solve the traffic equation to do that you know we have to first compute this inverse which is turned out to be this x matrix this is the i minus r inverse of this r is given here that is what is turned out to be here. Then the lambda is basically the total mean flow rate into each node is what given by lambda is gamma times i minus r inverse which is turning out to be this. So, 35, 19.411 and 16.138 is what you are getting. So, from which because this is lambda as you got you have already mu is given mu 1, mu 2, mu 3. So, you can compute now what is the offer load to each node which is R 1 is this 0.292, R 2 is 1.941 and R 3 is 5.379 is what then you have. So, obviously, you have 7 server here which is more than this, we have 3 server here which is more than this. So, the stability is there anyway otherwise 
that is how you know you are getting this anyway. Now using the formula for MMC you can compute what is LQ1 and LQ2 and LQ3 and also L1, L2, L3 right. So, the total system L is this and the system the total sojourn time is by the uh, Little's law it is you know L by summation of gamma i. So, gamma i is 35. So, this is what you have here right. So, gamma i is 35 because these two are 0. So, that is what is that means is that is the customer spends about 17 minutes in the network before he leaves the system that is what you are getting right. So, basically what you need to do you need to figure out what are the nodes, how many servers, what are the arrival rates externally, what are the service rates internally and the routing matrix. Once you have figured it out for any network that you can have here then it is just then the routine calculations that you know you need to get the performance measures right. So, other examples would be also similar again basically these are the parameters that is what you know you need to de determine from whatever description if at all anything is there are the directly parameters are there. fine. Now, this can also be extended in many ways, but we will just see this one extension which is very simple which is basically when you have multiple customer classes ok, but here we are assuming that all the customer classes have identical service time distribution and weight in the same FCFS queue. They do not have individual queues, they have the same FCFS queue that is what we are assuming. Under that you know this can be generalized to this multiple server classes this same idea that you have here. So, what you have then a customer of one type has a different routing probability matrix than a customer of another type that was the purpose of multiple class right each one you should designate as them. Now, you have to solve the traffic equation separately because each one has a different routing probability matrix. So, you can solve the traffic equation separately for each customer type and then add the resulting lambdas to get the node wise the lambda which is the node wise mean input in flow rate. Now, if R in the superscript T is the routing probability matrix for a customer of type T which is uh, say suppose assume that there are n type of classes then you basically you need to solve this equation to get lambda of T and once you get lambda of T then you get lambda with these things right that is what. Since there is a single queue you do not need to segregate the server to, deter, to serve the individual classes because a single queue and all servers are identical. So, that is that kind of result still holds. So, it is still MMC because of that. So, they have the same average waiting time since they have identical service time distributions and wait in the same FCFS queue the average waiting time at each node can be obtained via Little's law. And similar is the case with average sojourn time system wide one ok. We can also obtain in addition to system wide one the you know for each customer type at node each node also you can obtain the average system size as a proportion of this right because this is the uh, you know ith node teeth customer type and this is the overall right. So, you can take this proportion of this li it would be corresponding to the teeth class right. So, this is also additionally you can obtain in case of multiple customer classes ok. So, let us see the same example that we have just uh, talked about about the, the three node network of an insurance company's call center. What we have done there is that assume that there are 2 percent of the calls after finishing the climbs process goes to service and 1 percent from service to climb. But then if you look at it little carefully what we have assumed implicitly is that you know a customer who has already processed in claims he can go to service after finishing the service again he can come back to claims and go to service and come back to claims and so on. So, he can loop around before he exits because he might be that 2 percent one among the 2 percent and 2 1 percent that we are designating there right. So, he can revisit the previously visited node, but that is not a realistic in the given scenario. Probably you would have understood that you know 
you know they will not be able to you'll come back to that one once you reach to the service operator that in person when you are talking to that or when you are getting that probably you may have to call again that's a natural scenario so that thing that we had in that implicitly may not be a realistic situation if that is the case then what you can do you can designate these two as two different classes remember we have the single queue fcfs queue for all customers and the service anyone can do service for you know a, any of these classes in that node and then you know you have the process here right that's what you have so you the way around for this particular situation is that customers who must goes to climbs are type 1 customer so now what you can do this node 2 node 3 you can in fact segregate and then with a the routing and separately so that you know they will exit from there they will not come back to this head if you do that go so, so the nodes itself you are as if designating one is climbs node one is service node actually it is but then depending upon how the big routing is things will happen here right so who first go to climbs are type 1 customers you designate and type 2 customers are those who go to policy service for the first okay. then the two routing matrices for the two types of customers right so we are designating depending upon what is where they move first after uh, first node one if they go to climbs we call type one if they go to service we call type two so from type one right from type one they can go to type two right and then they have to exit from there they will not be able to that particular customer who had gone from type one to type two he will not be allowed to come back to type one right so that is the key that's that is the purpose for which you know we are designating this so that corresponding to that type one customers then the routing matrix would be this and corresponding to the other one the routing matrix would be this right remember so remember the other matrix where this here you have 0.55 0.45 0.02 here 0.01 now what we have happening there they will go here and from there they will go here and then they will out from here they will go to service and from service they will go to climbs and then they will be going out departing right so since 55% of the arrivals are type 1 so out of 35 so 55% is this much are type 1 arrivals this much are type 2 arrivals so you have computed now for each one for each class what is the arrival, external arrival rates at type 1 in other notes there is no arrival so you have these equations now you solve the two sets of traffic equations one for type 1 one for type 2 the two types here are two classes that you have here for the first class is this for the second class is as this right so that's what you will arrange so this is basically the throughput for each of this class within uh, each node that's what you know you are looking at here right now once i obtain this now i have to go node wise so i will sum it up right i will sum it up these two things to get node wise so i will get 35 19.408 and 16.135 now you see these two values are slightly lower than what was there in the previous case Re go back and see in the previous case it was 19.411 and 16.138 right so and here you see it is 408 it is 135 slightly less that's because anyway this percentage 1% 2% is very low because of this this impact is less but still you see this little lower uh, total mean flow because of that we are now disconnecting or disallowing the feedback to the previously visited node right because of that you know this this is slightly lower okay and because of that the other quantities also will have slight effect and that is what finally turning out to be l1 l2 l3 l you can compute the average system sojourn time like earlier you can compute which is approximately again Uh, this was slightly lower here but it didn't make too much impact on this 70 minutes because this is only approximate value but what you can do now is now individually like uh, for each type customer type now i can get the mean number to see like which customer type are more in where and so on so that is also 
possible to obtain in the case of multiple. So, we just use this expression right this is a proportion because this is the total mean flow rate in, in node i and this is of the teeth class. Okay. So, the proportion will give you proportion of this L i would give you the mean number of customers in the system for the teeth class in ith node that is precisely this you can obtain it here. Okay. Fine. So, this is all multiple there are other generalizations that is possible, but uh, things will become complex quickly and uh, anyway. So, this is what we can cover with respect to open Jackson network again Markovian network, but in the open Jackson network is what we have covered so far. So, our discussion of this open Jackson network would end here. Okay. Thank you. Bye.